Hello everyone, welcome to a new video of the module leasing. In the last video, we had a discussion on the introduction and concept of leasing and the types of or the classifications of leasing. So today we will discuss about the other classifications of leasing which may include equipment leasing as well as real estate leasing. So in different places and its different types, times, the leasing has presumed different forms. So, but it is broadly classified as equipment leasing and real estate leasing. So leasing can be classified as equipment leasing and real estate leasing. So from the name itself, I think we can figure out what does equipment leasing and real estate leasing means. So we will go more deep into that. Before that, equipment leasing can again be classified into two, financial lease and operating lease. So this is a major part of our discussion where we understand, we will try to understand the meaning of both these types and how are they different from each other. And there are different types of financial lease as well as operating lease. Okay, so equipment leasing is basically like simple leasing. It is a contract between the lesser and the lessee. And here the contract is for hiring the specific assets selected from a manufacturer or vendor. That means the particular lessee visits or goes through the equipment or asset list of a particular manufacturer or vendor and they select a particular asset or a or an equipment and they tell the vendor uh, sorry and they tell the lesser company that they would like to lease that particular asset at that point of time the lesser company purchases that particular asset and then leases that particular asset to the lessee so this is what is happening in equipment leasing. Okay, so we'll uh, go more into uh, go more deep into that. So equipment leasing is nothing but leasing of uh, or hiring of specific assets selected from a manufacturer or vendor. And here also the lesser retains the ownership and the lessee has the possession of the asset. And also this particular asset will be used or the benefit from the asset will be taken by the lessee for a specific period of time and in return they pay a lease rentals. So the consideration that is received by the lesser is known as lease, consider, uh, lease rental payments. Okay, lease rental payments and this particular rental payment covers all the expenses that is uh, regarding the depreciation, the interest and the other overheads and expenses are covered in this rental payments. Okay. So after uh, a particular point of time or after the specific period, the finance company that is uh, our lesser um, purchases the uh, equipment and leases to lessee. Okay, uh, so what happens in equipment leasing is that the lessee approaches uh, the particular lesser and tell them that I would like to get that particular asset for lease. So the lesser uh, approaches this particular manufacturer or vendor of the asset and purchases the equipment in the beginning and then they uh, they lease that particular asset or equipment to lessee. Okay, so this is what is happening in equipment leasing. So remember it is regarding hiring the specific assets. So at the end of this uh, economic life of the lease, the ownership will remain with the lesser only. Okay. So that is equipment leasing and uh, going into the types or classification of equipment leasing, there are mainly two types that is financial lease and operating lease. So we have already uh, seen financial lease and operating lease. So now we will discuss in detail about financial lease, its meaning, what are the characteristics or what is the nature of financial lease. Uh, then how is it different from operating lease and all? Okay, and the types of financial lease. 
So finance lease according to the International Accounting Standards Committee, it is defined as a lease that transfers substantially all the risk and rewards incident to ownership of an asset. Title may or may not be transferred. So in this particular type of equipment leasing, you should remember that all the expenses related to the maintenance or uh, cost of insurance. So all these expenses related to this particular leasing will be borne by the lessee and not by the lesser. Okay. So that is one of the ma major point that you should keep in mind while going through the word financial lease. So all the risk and reward incident to ownership of an asset is transferred to the lessee. So the lessee is the person who bears all the expenses, risk and reward. So the, in this case, the title may or may not be transferred. That means the ownership may or may not be transferred. That means the lessee has an option to purchase that particular asset after the specific lease period. Okay, it is optional. So thus it is known as full payout lease. It is known as full payout lease or also known as capital lease, long term lease or net lease. Okay. So in this particular financial lease case, the contract is irrevocable. That means a lesser and lessee entering into an agreement or entering into a contract of lease and this contract cannot be cancelled before the expiry date. Okay, so till the expiry date, the contract should go on forward. So this is irrevocable for the primary lease. That means it cannot be cancelled during the period of this particular lease. That means before expiry date, it cannot be cancelled. So, so the rental payment uh, given by the lessee should be adequate to recover total investment made by the lesser. That means if the uh, lesser purchases that particular equipment or asset for a sum of uh, say for example rupees 20 lakh, the rental payment should be such that this 20 lakh cost of purchase of this particular asset will be covered by the lessee. Okay, so the rental payment should recover the total investment made by the lesser in purchasing that asset from a particular manufacturer or vendor. And this is a long term lease and that too on fixed assets. Okay, so I hope you got the idea behind or the concept behind the rental payment. Okay. Then here the lessee, uh, so how is uh, how does it work means the lessee is a person who selects the equipment and uh, the lessee settles the price in terms of sale and then arranges a leasing company to buy it. Okay, so selecting an equipment, settling the price and uh, the terms of the sale and then he arranges or the lessee arranges a leasing company to buy it. So the leasing company purchases the particular asset and then leases that particular asset to whom? The lessee. Okay. So the lessee uses the equipment throughout uh, the specific period of lease contract. Uh, he maintains and insurance, uh, insures it and also uh, he takes care of the after sale services. That means the expenses related to after sale services are also taken care of by the lessee. Okay. So this is a full payout lease that we have already discussed. And uh, here is an obligatory payment. The obligatory payment is the lease rental payment that is done by the lessee. Okay. So this particular lease rental payment should always exceed the purchase price of the asset. So if that particular uh, rental payment exceed the price of purchase, uh, purchase only, uh, then uh, the uh, lesser will get a profit on it, profit on leasing. Okay. So we have already seen uh, the bears the risk of obsolescence. So the risk of obsolescence is borne by the lessee himself and it is also known as uh, capital lease or long term lease or net lease. So at the end of the term period, at the end of the specific period, the lessee has a purchase option. So he can either buy the asset after the lease period. Okay. So these are uh, the main ideas or uh, 
concepts that should come into your mind at the time of uh, learning about the financial list. So it cannot be cancelled. Then the lesser will not provide any service related to maintenance and insurance. Then the asset is fully amortized. So fully amortization means the rental payment should cover the cost of purchase of that particular asset from the manufacturer or vendor. Okay. So now we will move to the characteristics of financial lease. So the first one is fixed obligation. So what, what will be uh, the fixed obligation? The lessee has a fixed obligation to pay lease rentals to the lesser. So that is uh, periodically done by the lessee and this is not cancelled. Uh, it cannot be cancelled. This obligation cannot be cancelled. So it is like uh, when you are taking a loan and you are obliged to pay the interest. Same way here also this is, a, this is an obligation of the lessee. So that is um, fixed obligation. Then next is maintenance burden. So maintenance burden includes all the costs related to the insurance, the maintenance cost and all the expenses. And all these expenses are borne by or it is the responsibility of the lessee to bear all the expenses. That is maintenance burden. Okay. So what we have discussed as a meaning or concept of financial lease, uh, all the features comes under that. Third, we have termination. So termination is in relation with the ending of that particular lease period. So the, the contract will be, the lease contract will be terminated after the expiry of the spe, uh, stipulated basic lease period. Okay, so uh, if in case the lessee needs to uh, purchase or the lessee is uh, willing to purchase the asset after the lease period, termination of the lease period, then the lessee and lesser uh, gets into a negotiation regarding the uh, market price. Okay, so after considering the market price, they both get into a negotiation and they may fix a price so that he can buy, the lessee can buy the asset. Then basic lease period is regarding, uh, we have already discussed the a lease period that is the contract entered into by the lesser and the lessee is not cancellable uh, before the stipulated uh, lease period time. That means before the end of that contract time. So uh, basically, usually uh, the financial lease covers uh, from one year to 20 years. That is the range of financial lease. And uh, while selecting or while fixing the lease period, the economic life or uh, the useful life of the asset is also considered. Okay. Then always remember the lease period will be less than the expected life of asset or shorter than the expected life of asset. <clears throat> Then we have uh, next feature that is amortize, full amortization. So full amortization means uh, when uh, financial lease is made under a written agreement. So uh, they will um, uh, enter into uh, the agreement based on which the re uh, rental payments shall cover the service life of the asset. That means for an example, if AB limited is the lesser and uh, he leases an uh, so that particular company leases an asset with an expected life of 20 years, the lease period will be almost 20 years to recover its cost with the period. So we already discussed that there is uh, the re full uh, rental payments should cover all the expenses of purchasing that particular asset. So in order to cover that, the lease period should be more or less equal to uh, the expected life of that particular asset. So that is known as full amortization. Okay. So then regarding the profitability, uh, I already mentioned that uh, the always remember the total lease payment should be more than the original cost of asset. So if the lease payment is more than the cost of asset, then only the lesser will get a profit. And uh, lessee's profit is based on the purchase or borrow decisions uh, on uh, borrow decisions of the asset. So if they uh, make a decision regarding the purchase based on that the lessee will get profit or the lessee's profit depends on that and also if the asset has any residual value it will be an additional profit for the lesser okay so um, the lease rentals paid by uh, one particular lessee will can be shown as can be shown in the PNL account of the lessee and they can also 
claim a deduction from the taxable income. So thus they get a tax benefit too. Then lesser's responsibility we have already mentioned. He arranges funding and accepts the invoice from the supplier on the purchase of the asset and all. He is an owner and he can claim depreciation. So that is regarding lesser's responsibility. And next is alternative to debt financing. So debt financing is mostly borrowed in terms of cash so here in leasing it is asset instead of borrowing of cash okay so also um, the obligation of rentals must be uh, like the obligation of payment of interest and principal on the loan so that there is a similar feature uh, like that also in case of default in payment of lease rentals the lesser can move to the court for further actions and uh, remedies so these are the main concept or idea behind financial lease and the characteristics behind financial lease. So in the next video we will discuss more on leasing and types of leasing. Thank you.